Resort Loop.com is proud to be sponsored by Joffrey's Coffee and Tea Company. Joffrey's now offers coffee subscriptions. You can order a three, six, or 12 month subscription. You can choose from three collections the Flavored Coffee Collection, the Roast Masters Collection, or the Disney Signature Coffee Collection. Each collection includes three bags per month. With the Joffrey's Coffee subscriptions, never run out of great coffee again. Learn more and order at Joffrey's.com. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. We are now passing through the Transportation and Ticket Center on our way to the Polynesian Village Resort Hotel. If you'd like to return to the Transportation and Ticket Center, you may do so by boarding an express monorail at the Magic Kingdom station. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm Tim Scott, this is... ResortLoop.com. It's roundtable day, but we're not going to talk DVC necessarily today. Joining me on the show today, we have Mr. Joe Quattrochi. Hey, Tim. What's going on, brother? How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks so much for joining us from your uh, high-quality studio, I understand. I'm calling you from my vehicle in Lake Mary, Florida. My wife is actually getting her hair done. So, like we said pre-show, Tim, the show must go on, it no does. matter where you're at. Absolutely right. And you don't have to lie if you're getting your hair colored. It's fine. No, I well, I didn't get it colored, but I, I have noticed a few grays coming in lately, which makes me a little nervous. Oh, yeah. Once they start, it's a slippery I don't know, slope. It's, it's a slippery slope, right? It, <laughs> absolutely it is. Also, Mr. Brad Coates. Hey, everybody. And I'm busy getting a hair transplant, so I'm getting all the hairs implanted in my skull. So <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the noise you hear in the background. And I really should have started. Uh, yeah. Ouch, ouch. <laughs> You'll need to mute that, Brad. And then also... Should have started with her. Should have gone ladies first, but I did an order. I got them online. Emily Hansa Hicks. That's right. And I, too, am in the beautiful studio of my home, busy pulling my hair out, uh, <laughs> taking care of my three beautiful children. <laughs> well, we got Emily. it all covered. It's four, <laughs> Emily. It's four. You got Matt, too, right? So, oh, right. He so, Matt, kept, he the only thing left for you is to either get permed or braided. That's everything else is covered. <laughs> <So. laughs> he has the best hair in the family. He's, all he has to do is cut that, and it looks good. <laughs> awesome. Then, unfortunately, Rebecca Toon couldn't be with us tonight. She's busy with other responsibilities, making the world safe for our children. <laughs> anyway, I'm so, working, making the world safe from my children. So, kind of the same thing. There you go. Different. Absolutely. So, tonight, instead of that, we're not going to talk about DVC. That show will be out in another week or so. But I want to get everybody together because I thought a fun topic would be to talk about our favorite splurges for Walt Disney World. Now, we all know Disney World is an expensive vacation. We can't deny that, right, guys? No, uh, definitely yeah, that's true. So we've all found ways true, that we've... True, it's a splurge. Exa- it's a splurge in itself. But we've all, you know, cut back on certain things, maybe, to save up for the trip. But once you get on the trip, there's certain things you might want to, you know, spend the extra money for. Something special. So uh, let's now start with ladies first. I almost called you Rebecca, Emily. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Emily. I could be mixed up with worse people, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. I we do love, not mind. We love her um, so much. Okay, so should we do one thing at a time and then rotate, or should we just do them all at the same time? What are your thoughts? I just do I'm one, and we'll, t- we'll talk about it, and we'll just keep going. Cool. Okay, so um, I have a bunch of thoughts, but first and foremost, you splurge on Epcot. <gasps> so oh. you don't pay attention to the amount of swipes or little badge uh, or um, magic band presses when you're going around the world and picking up those little treats at the different countries during food and wine you know like you can you can go through all the ways to save money during those festivals that you can but i say splurge don't even pay attention don't look at that folio till the last day (laughs) and (laughs) maybe not even then (laughs) but yeah just try everything that is one of our favorite things to do is just say we don't care and we're going to get like every little sample we're going to try every little thing we want to and um yeah so that's one of them how about you guys well, first of all, Tim, I, I'm I'm actually very impressed that Emily uh, splurged on a whole park. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> so, she didn't uh, she didn't narrow it down to us to the food. So well, I that's good. I mean, it off. I mean, she <laughs> set the bar kind of high there. You know? so, I mean, I I agree. I mean, I don't think if listen if, if um, food and wine or not food and wine, you know, if that's something you do and. You want to go and do the whole drinking around the world or, you know, eating around the world and snacking around the world as, you know, our Mickey dudes are known for is our snack crawls. I mean, yeah. I mean, splurge by not looking and just tapping away. I mean, or getting a gift card and loading it up and just scanning and going. I mean, there's, I mean, that's, 
that's that's what vacation's about, right? Especially that's why I think the Magic Band was designed that way. Just tap and go. So especially for exactly. food and wine. I mean, that's why you're there. You're not there to <laughs> go to the park for food and wine. Usually, you spend a day just doing food and wine. Yep. Just keep scanning until they say you can't scan it anymore. Or right. tell the, while you're call the rescue I squad. Say you stop. Right. <laughs> and while you're in Epcot, I say I'll just keep going. I would splurge every time in Norway. Um, get yourself some Heli Hansen and uh, pretend like you're a skier or just an adorably outfitted person, you know, mom or whatever. But yeah, like that's our favorite place to, we actually plan for those purchases. Well, Matt will be like, you know, I kind of need a new jacket. So, you know, I kind of think I, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until our trip and then I'm going to see what they have in Norway. <laughs> so that's, I have this gorgeous little blue and white striped thing and then Tara Renee out there somewhere. She has some cool, I think they're actually blue and white striped too, boots. So Heli Hansen stuff in Norway. Dale's in Norway too, but that stuff is like so expensive. You want to just buy it uh, retail when you get home. Well, I think for, for me, one of my favorite splurges never was for many years going to either of the parks, going to Disneyland or Disney World. But I splurged for, I bought myself my own birthday gift a few years back. And ever since then, I've been addicted to tours. Oh. Ooh, uh, we have not done those because our kids are so young. Yeah. So I splurged back when it was right after, well, it was like the second year the Animal Kingdom had opened Avatar and was still after, I think it was my third or fourth trip that I was going. And I still hadn't been able to get a fast pass for Flight of Avatar, and I said, this is getting ridiculous. I mean, I'm on the phone the second I can, and, and 90 days in advance, I could never get it. So um, I splurged on that that tour that lets you do all of the, the all of the major rides. It's a, a plaid VIP tour. And it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't cheap. It was like 250, I think, a person or, yeah, something like that. So for four of us, same price for kids as adults. But Man, it was worth every penny. I had such a great time, and so ever since then, we've done multiple ones. We've done the, the the big one there at uh, Magic Kingdom. Uh, that's the last one we did. I forget what the name of it is. Where you spend the whole day in the park, go down to the utilidors and keys to the kingdom, maybe. Yeah, I think sure. that's it. Yeah, it's, the, way, it's Brad, the eight hour one. <laughs> that's a great a great idea because literally every single person we know that we know has a larger vacation budget than we do. Um, we always tell them to get a VIP tour, especially like if they're sort of impatient for like, if you, if this is like, you're going to Disney and you have to see it all and you have to ride all the headliners, get, get a plaid, just do that. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks and, we would do that. We wouldn't because we're lazy DVCers that'll just not wait in lines. We'll just go well, back and come plus back pay, pay, Paying for a true plaid, what you have to pay for that is like, yeah, yeah we do we go so much that it's like really what how am i going to get my that money back out of this that's going to be hard but, right but those other Someday. smaller plaid trips that because they do one that does all of the fast ride the the fun rides the thrill rides they do a vip oh, cool. plaid that one takes you to all the main rides in magic kingdom epcot and hollywood studios i didn't know that Mm -hmm. I guess it's not like hiring the hour by hour plaid it's like no nope, no nope. it's like it's once again it's about Two hundred fifty, three hundred dollars a person, and then you go and you do all the mountains, and then you go to Epcot. You have lunch, and you do Soren, and you do Test Track, and then you leave there and you end up in Hollywood Studios. Um, so that's another one, and they actually do another one, a plaid one that is just for kids' rides. So you get Dumbo and and uh, Peter Pan and and all of those. So just yeah. kind of poor man's version. None of our friends have ever taken us up on this Disney planning thing, but that is, I think that sounds like the perfect way to do it if you're just going mm -hmm. in for a couple of days and you have the budget for it. Budget is the key. Yeah. <laughs> right. I want to do, I want to do the wild Africa thing someday. Yeah. When the kids are older because they love animals so much. I think that would be the wild Africa safari or I forget what it's called, but that, that is like on my list too. That's why I'm still working guys. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> wild the Africa, it's a wild Africa trek. Okay, there you go. Cool. I always tell the mm -hmm. kids like this: the reason mommy works is right. a to to put food on the table, but also b so that we can go to Disney World. <laughs> so, <laughs> and they're probably like, we haven't gone this year. What's going on? Mom needs to work harder. <laughs> I know, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe, what have you got for us? So, so uh, 
Brad and Tim and Emily, I'm going to kind of roll mine into kind of my current status or where I'm sitting right now is, um, and everybody who's been listening to Resort Loop for how many years I've been privileged to be on the show, uh, I am a big spa fan. And I include salon services and, and other, other things like that. So no surprise, Jen and I are huge fans of massages and facials and spa services. So I'm going to say if you're beating yourself up, and you're going commando, park up, you know, rope drop to, to close or being on your feet all day, splurge and book yourself a census spa. You know, go to over to, you know, Grand Floridian to census or Saratoga Springs or you've got the new salon over at Wilderness Lodge. It's it's not a and that's not a spa, but it's like a salon. Or I think there's a, a smaller um, uh, spa service area. I think at Beach Club has got one. I think uh, Coronado Springs is a small one as well. But the big ones are obviously Grand Floridian and uh, Saratoga Springs. But you know, if you're a DVC member, you get 25 percent off. So you could splurge and still save a little bit as well. There is also an AP discount for census as well. But you know what? Take go in the morning. You know, go get yourself a 50 minute or 80 minute massage, whatever like I said, you can afford or whatever, how much you want to splurge on. And, you know, if or for example, if uh, you're a guy and you want to go play golf or go do something else, splurge and treat your wife to maybe like a you know, pedicure or manicure or, or something to that to that sense, you know. But, um, yeah, I'm all about splurging on on the uh, the spa appointments. I think uh, it's a great way. You can also turn that into a day where, you know, when you book a spa appointment. You know, you could use those facilities for the whole day. So if you're over at Saratoga Springs, even if you're not staying there, you get your treatment in the morning, you have a little lunch, you know, like you hang up by the pool a little bit, you get back into the sauna later on in the day or the whirlpool, make a nice day out of it, you know? So uh, that's why I think, you know, just with the, a little bit of, the, of the, the, the spa services, I think it's always a great way. And I don't care. Listen, there's a lot of guys out there who say like, oh, I don't do that stuff. Let me tell you, it's amazing. If you haven't done it, try it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's definitely relaxing, uh, and especially if you're beating yourself up in the parks, going, you know, nonstop for eight, ten hours a day. Uh, it's a great way to unwind a little bit. And, uh, yeah, you'll definitely splurge. I mean, <laughs> I've told the story about, you know, I really splurged in Hawaii the one time at Alani. <laughs> Brad, there is no DVC discount in Alani, by the way. No, 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 there is not. I, learned <laughs> I already know. Way. That was, a, that was a big splurge, all right? That was a shocker. Yeah. But uh, I, that, we had the I exact say, same experience. We thought, well, oh, this one will be bad, but figure take off the discount. And yeah, it wasn't that, one. <laughs> that didn't happen there. So, no. uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of that. So, uh, yeah. Joe, what's your uh, services or spa services? So. Joe, what's your go to treatment? I mean, listen, like I've kind of been spoiled. I always go for 80 minute uh, the, the rock, hot rock massage, you know, if I could yeah. do that. Um, also, too, is my wife just introduced me to a facial service uh, during our anniversary trip this past year. That was awesome as well. Huh. So, uh, but yeah, we usually the default is we try to do the eighty the eighty minute massage just because once you've done it eighty minutes, it's hard to go back to fifty. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but yeah, we we enjoy doing the eighty minute with the hot rock massage, and uh, uh, facials are nice as well. So, uh, I'm I'm a little I don't know. <laughs> I like that kind of stuff. So. so, are they like revving you for eighty minutes? I mean, they do a lot. Yeah, I mean, like with oh. the rocks. Yeah, I mean, it's. It, I tell you what, massage therapists out there, I don't know how they do it. Like my wife will ask me to, like, you know, rub her feet. You know, we're sitting on the couch, or whatever. You know, <laughs> right. like you try yes. to do nice husband things. <laughs> right. I don't know how these people do this professionally, and they do it so well. I mean, it's honestly, I just I don't know how they do it for eighty minutes. It's amazing. Wow. By the what? way, Joe, you just having 80 minutes to myself would be a slurge. So, <laughs> yeah, listen, you're, especially your three children, it's like, you know. Can, really, can you turn off the lights and just leave me in here by myself? Right. <laughs> Let me, and then you just feel guilty because you're like, I should be doing something. I could be making my life better. But, but let me take that slurge to a, a mom level, which is, I totally agree. Uh, so, I actually like cut my own hair most of the time because of time <laughs> and because of laziness to so making appointments. But, um, I would say that when I go to Disney, almost every single time, especially if we stay at the Grand Floridian, I make an appointment at the salon to get my hair done, nice. which is like okay. the hugest splurge. And then um, even if I don't do that, I usually try to get a pedicure because um, that is also a huge splurge for me. So those are like the mom versions. They're quicker. And then they're technically utilitarian, like your hair is getting cut or, you know, highlighted but, or whatever but, but you need to do. But the thing is, you're a mother of three. All right, mm -hmm. this is this is something you don't do. Like right. You said you, you should usually kind of cut your own hair a little bit, right? So that's something that 
it you, that this is that's that is the definition of what this show is about today. Is you are right. splurging on something you normally don't do, or you know, in a place that it's more expensive to do it, but you know, what, in a place that you love and that you right. enjoy doing it. So that's that's a hundred percent on on par right there. Yeah. Yes, I love and it. One of these days, one of these days, I'm going to try a massage. That sounds what's, amazing. What's that, Tim? No, I just said I love that splurge. Yeah. Uh, here's another one. I'm sure we probably on all of our list. Food. Oh yes. The the dining experiences at Walt Disney World. That that is that is by far. We we're foodies. I don't know how we became foodies. I w- I've always been such a a pain ever since I was a kid that, you know, it's, I'll eat carrots and green beans. Don't put any other vegetable on my plate. You know, you're discerning. <laughs> you were discerning. Yeah. I was discerning. Age. Yeah. That wasn't the word <laughs> my mom used, but thank you very much. I like yours better. <laughs> so, but, uh, but somehow along the way we just fell in love. So like when we go on the cruises, it, I mean, it was Palo for sure. And then when we're on the two bigger ships, it's Remy. We do Remy every time we've done Victorian Alberts. We've done, We've done uh, Club 33 multiple times, and and so um, we just love that kind of experience. But you don't have to spend all that, right? There's other great restaurants. That, are there any of them that you guys say, okay, on every trip, this is where we're going? I mean, you know, we we was like we like to do Ohana because Ohana's not cheap, even no. for two people. Ohana's not cheap, but you know, Jen and I are fans of Ohana. We like Cali Grill, obviously. We're big fans of Citrico's. Um, so that's been no secret there. And those are all priced, even with Tables in Wonderland. And and God knows if Tables in Wonderland is going to be around for much longer. I've been hearing rumors about that, which is another story. But um, but yeah, I mean, th- those are all those are all you know signature dining restaurants that are that are not cheap even for just you know a, a, a couple. You know what I'm saying? So uh, and that's the one thing you know, Brad, is that you know Jen and I, you know, we're in a much different situation than the way Tim vacation or Emily vacations or the way you vacation. Like we don't have children, so like. For us to, you know, our splurges are a lot on food because, like, yeah, we do the massage and I'll play golf and all stuff, but like, we go out to eat a lot. I mean, so for, you know, and that's the majority of the money we put away when we go on vacations, we spend on food. I mean, so that's a huge splurge. For right. Us. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I mean, that's all about Epcot right there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, there's some good ones in other parks, but Epcot's got by far the, Largest number of really quality restaurants. What's your What's your go to, Emily? Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Go ahead. I was just say one thing, and and, um, and I know Tim's a, a big restaurant guy too. Me and Tim have a lot of our same favorites, but I, I find <laughs> us actually. Um, I know Tim's a big contemporary guy like me, so I find myself at like California Grill a lot, the Wave a lot. I find myself at the resorts yes. more yes. than the parks. So Tim, I mean, I don't know. Like I know Brad and Emily are fans of like the the park restaurants, like Epcot. I mean. Are you? I, I think you're more of like a resort dining guy, like me, right? I mean, I love resort restaurants. Oh. Oh, I will yeah. say, was it a know, couple years ago? We were at Citrico's Grand Floridian for the first time. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Yes, I would say that. Uh, to be fair, I think that the only no, this is going to sound really judgy, so this is not true. So just I'm going to preface it with this is not even true. This is based on just sort of my opinion today. Um, but like the only in park restaurant that we would even go to at this point would be um, Skipper's. The uh, Can- Skipper's yeah. Cantina. Skipper's Cantina. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, 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 sorry. And um, Nomad. Or not Nomad, um, Tiffin's. So those are the two that are, like, because we like that experimental kind of uh, more exotic mm-hmm. things that we can't get locally. Like, they have, like, the octopus, and they have just some amazing, amazing. That fish dish at the Skipper right. Canteen with the spines. Right. That, but to, <laughs> that was a but cool to all of your points, like, we eat at the resort. Like, if we're going to go out to eat, we're yeah. eating at, you know, we're, oh, and, um. Boathouse, boathouse is amazing, yeah. and uh, yeah, but but mostly we eat at the resorts, is at the the signature places at the resorts. Grand mm. Floridian is my base. Um, I'm sorry, Victorian Alberts. I just want to throw it out there. Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah, awesome. Tim. Yes, back to your, I feel like everybody should go once once in their life to Victoria and Alberts. Yeah. But Tim, tell us about your faves. Yeah, favorite. Oh. I'm going to go with any restaurant at Disney. When I'm on vacation, I or especially at home or on vacation, I rarely get like an appetizer. But if anywhere we go has lobster bisque on the menu, I oh, will yeah. order, I will order it. You are a good man. With fine <laughs> qualities and excellent taste. Well, if and you haven't tried, I was going to say, Tim, if you haven't tried Narcusi's yet over there, I've not. Uh, same same. Place, you got to give that a try because oh. the seafood there is. Off the chart, so I bet they have lobster bisque. I will say, I oh, loved it at Yachtsman so Steakhouse. Yachtsman Steakhouse was fantastic, yeah. Yes, 
So Tim, oh. so Tim, and I don't want to cut off the restaurant talk, but no, I, no. we could continue this. But I, I'd like to throw in my next my next splurge, and it and it kind of fits in with with the restaurants what we're talking about. Well, do it. So, and we discussed this a little bit before, but I would say if you're on vacation and you're going to all these great restaurants like we're discussing right now, like you know we're we're going to the Contemporary, we're going to the Polynesian, or you know to Animal Kingdom Lodge or wherever, right? You know, if, if you've done Magical Express and, you know, and you don't have a car on property, it can be very hard and very time consuming. Everybody knows that to go from one resort to another. Go ahead and splurge on using a Lyft or using an Uber. If you're able to do it, you feel comfortable doing it where you could fit your party into an Uber, spend the 10 or 15 bucks. And if you're staying at like Saratoga Springs, you need to go to the Contemporary or you need to go to... You know, I don't know the beach club. Spend the fifteen bucks. Take the Uber or Lyft from your resort to the restaurant. Save yourself the good hour plus of travel time, and with that fifteen bucks, we'll give you an hour, an hour, fifteen minutes of your life back. And so that's the best thing I can say. So if you're going to go to these great restaurants, get there, enjoy like a, a pre-dinner drink, enjoy the amenities at the resort before your dinner reservation. But splurge on the transportation. I know we all love Disney transportation. We all love monorails and, and I love buses and, and boats and all that stuff. But sometimes you just want to get to the restaurant and just enjoy your experience. And that's what I'm saying. Splurge on an Uber or Lyft to get from yeah, like resort that to resort. Yeah. Four, four restaurants. And I want to segue that to continue if you guys have extra restaurants. But I wanted to preface that as my next splurge. So I just want to throw that out. There. Oh, you're so right. That We've been doing that almost every recent trip because... I don't know that it's because the, I don't think anything got slower. It's just that we got more impatient or something. Um, so we've been taking, honestly, it, like we've been taking anytime we're too far away or there's any time crunch at all. We uh, like, even for the opening of galaxy's edge, we took an Uber in the very early morning to get our, our uh, spots for rise of the resistance. Um, and of course the bus showed up right around when we did, but, yeah. <laughs> but we didn't have to sit in the bus or wait for a bus. So yeah. that's nice. I know a lot <laughs> of people talk about renting cars when they go there and I don't know about you guys, but personally, and I, I know Joe, you're close. So you drive a lot. I just don't like having my car there. I don't like driving a, around property. It just, it's to me, it feels half the time, like I'm back in LA. I just don't, it's t- right. <laughs> tension building. I would rather do the splurge, like you said. And to me, yeah, it's it's a splurge, but I'd rather do that than renting a car. Do Uber. Well, also, also too, to. Brad, if, if you, you want to have a few drinks, you know, then you don't have to worry about. Yes. You know, I mean, Disney roads are crazy. We all know that. You know Brad. Just, Brad gets all yeah, the way yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He I can't control ID. it. No one can keep him down. I go, well, I got I go go potty all the time. So. <laughs> By the way, guys, Brad does drive us home from the podcast, I swear. <laughs> Every week. He's the only one who can. I am the Legally designated speaking. driver. <laughs> Wait, everybody, I have a special guest here who just joined the recording studio. Say hello. Hi. Hey. 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 This is Jen Q here on, on the Hey, studio. Jen, your hello. hair looks beautiful. You look great. Your hair looks great. You, you, you're even better looking than we thought you were before, which was wow, pretty darn good looking. I didn't think that was possible. So, just, are, so, just, so, so Tim, just for, for everybody to know I'm safe, Jen is now in the driver's seat, and I'm now in the passenger seat of this recording studio. <laughs> okay, beautiful. Excellent. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't sound nearly as exciting as having it flipped around the other way around and wearing a blindfold. <laughs> See, the the great thing is the background noises from you is like a civilized adult, but I don't know if you can hear my son screaming in the other room. But it's over. Yeah, I don't even know what it's about because luckily Matt has taken over dinner. <laughs> um, but quick insertion: I did ask my children what their splurges would be. And my son Lad said he would get the expensive Lego train, um, uh, which we always yes. tell him it's too expensive, so we can't get it. And then my daughter said she would get the seventy-five dollar large stitch stuffed animal. And then we're still waiting for my other daughter because she initially said she wanted a pack of Walt Disney World themed playing cards, and we're like, "What are you even saying? That is not a splurge." <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, but hey, stop! Stop pressuring her. Right, Be I should happy. just be like, "You're right." It was a you go, dollars. honey. Here it is. <laughs> You're going. <laughs> Hope you have a great Christmas. <laughs> um, taking it in a totally uh, frivolous direction, have have any of you guys gotten one of those poolside cabanas that we used to make fun of? Because I think I mentioned it in one podcast a long time ago. We did that, and it was 
kind of silly but very fun. I've done it in uh, Jen and I have done it with uh, Florence Porter and Mike, her husband, and Alani. We did it. So mm-hmm. that, that was actually a was really, it awesome there? That was actually a really good day. Uh, it actually like the tropical storm was coming through at the same time. So uh, that was actually a really good splurge. Um, we split it. And uh, yeah, it was actually a really good time. It was a nice experience. We did it one day. We relaxed. We had a TV out there, a, a fridge full of refreshments, oh. and so on. So it, it was actually that was actually a really good thing, especially because you're at Alani. You're it, it's not like something where we go every year. So we want to do something special for the day, and you know we're great friends with them, and we had a good time. So that's something we we definitely done. We haven't done it in Disney World yet, but there in Alani, yes, we've done. So in our trip to Alani, uh, you know Disney people are known to go to other places i know it's hard to believe but we actually went over to the um there's a water park not very far it's like a not even a 10 minute drive from aulani um a big water park one of those named ones i forget you know splash and wild or whatever but anyway um and we rented one there and at a water park man that was really nice so then we when we went to florida the last time and we went to volcano bay we rented one there and that was incredible yeah, that was a great experience. That made the water park day so much nicer to be able to go back to your cabana and just chill out. Well, what's in the cabana at Volcano Bay? Um, well, actually, I should correct that. We didn't. We did not get the the actual full cabana at uh, Volcano Bay. We got it. It's they're called. Um, oh, what are they called? But they're basically lounging chairs. Uh, but what they are is they're chairs with a big covering over the top and then there's a a locking um box in between you so you can put all your wallets and stuff in there and lock it keep it safe and then there's a little flag you run up the pole and then the restaurant that's right there they run over there and get you drinks and oh heck yeah and and food and and you never have to leave your little seat there so run that that flag up and see who salutes nice yeah and and it wasn't bad i think we paid i think we paid about $80 $80 for a chair, and that was two people for the chair. So two of them for the four of us was 160 bucks. So I would argue that these cabana and relaxation type things actually save you money because if you're walking around in Disney World, you're probably buying things, food, souvenirs, whatever. And so um, I, I think really honestly, some of these things you could justify from a financial perspective. It's just like, a reallocation, Emily. It's yeah, just a reality. Like Instead of spending <laughs> the money in the park and your kids, you're just right. you're giving it to the you're resort to have a, a chair. The pool. Yeah. And you're invested in that relaxation. So you really, really do it and you do it all day long and you enjoy it thoroughly instead of thinking like, oh, we should probably go ride whatever. But no, you paid $200 to sit in that tent in the rain. I, I know it. I, I know it saves me money because that that cuts down on my wife's Mickey bars. So, <laughs> yes, yes. She's not walking around every time she sees a Mickey bar. It's like I gotta have one. Like, babe, that's your fourteenth today. Could we cut back? <laughs> She's Why? like, no, we're hey, splurging. Hey, hey, t- hey Tim, what, what, what do you have? Well, we, we've kind of dominated this conversation. What is the you know the great Tim Scott? What what is he? Uh, what does what is, what is his splurging consist of? One of my splurge. One, make sure you're buckled up. We need everyone to be safe. Two. <laughs> <laughs> I am. One of my our big splurges, and we've done it a few times, is opt for the club level room in the resort. Nice. Oh, yeah. You get your little uh, nice. No concierge lounge with snacks. And if you're at the Polynesian, you have a view of fireworks, and water shows. And I'll say, it, it can be a, you know, you're never really going to break even on the concierge room with all the snacks <laughs> but uh sometimes you don't get the concierge room with like the top view of like the lake instead you go to like a garden view you can save money that way and still have the enjoy the access to the concierge lounge that's one of our big splurges uh, i will say we over and over and over again splurge on the luau and hoop dee doo mm. when anytime we're taking people because we think like this is just so quintessentially disney and it's so like it just transports you and you just have such a good time and so that's another splurge. Like if you have not gone to the Luau or, and you have, have not gone to Hoop Dee Doo. And by the way, the Luau is actually called Spirit of Aloha if you're looking for it. Um, I think it's worth every single penny because it's just so entertaining. Like it doesn't even matter. The food is a little bit of, the it's, food is uh, quotidien as the French would say. Like it's kind of like, eh. but uh, we enjoy it. It's good. You'll food. get full. Yeah, you'll get yeah, full. You'll, right. It's not, it's not, um, you know. Monsieur Paul. California Grill. Yes, <laughs> right, exactly. But not... you will be so busy watching like the fire dancers and the the hula dancers that you will not be thinking about your food. 
yeah. they'll just be and there's unlimited sangria i mean come on guys my so. my first time to the luau unfortunately soured me and luckily i was able to change that later but the first time i went we, the show got rained out but but oh, in no. fashion they waited they waited to get us there and get us seated and served the first round of food before they announced there was going to be no show. And they, so they're going to give me back all these points, but it didn't matter because I was leaving the next day. So I was like, oh, we'll just stay here and eat the food. What you were saying, Tim, about the uh, getting club, sort of the more exclusive experience. Uh, my husband also, I was I was pulling people anytime I go and mute myself. Mm-hmm. My husband says, although I'm also listening to you, I promise. <laughs> and I'm very used to listening to six people at once talking yes. to me. Um, <laughs> but uh, the... Uh, the Golden Oak experience, which is what my husband chooses to splurge on. Oh. So um, I highly support this. Again, this is why we work. Um, someday we will get a house in Golden Oak and you all Hello? can come to visit. Hello, Hello Joe. Hey, Joe. Um, I was just inviting everybody to Golden Oak because that's going to be my husband's splurge. He says, like, the exclusive experience and the concierge kind of experience. Like, if you're on a Disney cruise, we haven't done concierge yet because, dear God, have you seen the prices? But someday, right. someday. Well, speaking, of, uh, thank you, Tim, for getting me back on the call here. No problem. Uh, I'm literally on, I'm literally on I four East right now. But uh, <laughs> so I just got to, way better uh, too. And, and and Emily, I apologize because I, I was dropped off the call. But I wanted to ask Tim, you know, do, do a lot of your clients? Do you see them a lot of them splurging on the concierge, all the club levels for like the resorts? That's something I wanted to ask you about. We had connection issues with you before, so is that something that a lot of your clients upgrade to or? Um, no, not not really. He was. He was. No, yeah. not, no, not really. For the, usually they're happy with uh, different views, lake views, but not not too much actually opting for the concierge. Yeah, How, and how I about you, Brad? I don't know that uh, I've had anybody, any of my clients book concierge. They're usually booking the... Uh, but part of that, I think, is because, you know, I, I steer them towards experiences. And so I get them, a lot of them that book the tours, but not the concierge. And it is very pricey, and you, you kind of have to... Uh, Schedule time to enjoy the resort, which we always talk about. Exactly. But if Make you're it a resort trip, but if you're going, you know, parks the whole time. You no, know, I can't really recommend going concierge. But if you're planning a couple off days, you know, you have a seven day vacation and a five day ticket type thing. That's why I like with uh, with the DVC, with the Animal Kingdom, where if you own if you own there, you may get lucky to get the concierge. And I I do a split stay. And to do and just do a couple of days. So mm-hmm. those days are just my off days, and we enjoy and really take advantage of it. So, yep. When you're in your room at eight o'clock at night because you just need the kids to just go to sleep because otherwise tomorrow will be a disaster. Uh, buy some wine at the at the the gift shop in the the wine in uh, Africa, by the way. Or I'm sorry, not Africa, in Animal Kingdom. It's just amazing. So just get some get some wine at the gift shop, and then go sit on your balcony and watch fireworks or go watch the safari or go watch just watch the castle glow at night that's like an amazing splurge that especially parents with young kids you will get the benefit of like a couple extra hours of sort of the disney experience if you do splurge on the view and now back to you tim (laughs) thank you emily sorry (laughs) does anybody have any good splurges there are there are actually so many splurges but for me it was basically food and for the room, because I don't even, we don't always splurge on the room. Sometimes it's just a matter of getting down there. And sometimes if you already have tickets, the room is the most yeah. expensive part of the trip. Well, you know, Joe mentioned earlier, he said, he said for him and Jen that they, they vacation different than the rest of the three of us. But, um, but I actually, Joe, vacation like you, because now my kids are grown. So the last, you know, multiple trips and going forward, a lot of our trips are going to be just me and the wife. So, um, or my kids are full grown. So what's become the last couple of years, a splurge for us is to do a split stay between Disney and Universal. So because they're, they're older and they like the, 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 you know, some of the rides there and the experiences there. Um, and so we'll do a split stay and go over there and there's a cool, um, uh, if you if you use a travel agent, call Tim. He'll line it up for you. I don't know. <laughs> have you ever had any clients you book the Take Two tour that takes you from 
It's a you pay for a bus and it actually picks you up from Disney World at whatever resort you're at, brings you to Universal, and then when you finish with your multiple days, it'll take you to the airport. Or it'll do it the other way. It'll bring you from the airport to Universal. Then when you're ready, take you straight over to Disney. Um, it's called a take two. And um, so it's a great way to, to – now you have the transportation thing taken care of. Yeah, and so I have that yet. All my clients have been you know, all Disney, but I have thrown it out there for you know those of them mentioned yeah. they wanted to see you know, Man, Harry I'm Potter. I'm telling you, with. it works great. That's like it? we did – there's a couple of times. We did Universal all day long, mm-hmm. and then we just said, well, we don't want you to pick us up till 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. And they, was that okay? And they said, oh, yeah, no problem. Oh, nice. So headed over to Disney and then went to bed and got up the next morning and went after it. So <laughs> – I said one other splurge. I'm gonna that, have to try that. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Joe. Sorry, or not Joe. Oh. <laughs> no, no problem. I was say one, one other splurge that we would always do that who knows if it'll be available anymore is the park hopper. Yeah, that's you know? a good point. Oh yeah, that comes back. Good, good, good point. Yeah, right now the rest and of all passed. next year you're still having to, you know, reserve parks. So that doesn't make any sense if they're going to bring back park hopper. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. It's going to be right. an interesting period, about well, six say, months or so. I mean, I, I'm a fan of splurging on the annual pass because you get the discount associated with it. Um, especially if you plan two trips within a 12-month period, you can get it for, you're basically getting tickets for both trips. And so, um, in most cases, that makes sense as long as your trips are long enough. So, I mean, that's basically a park hopper, right? Mm-hmm. Hey Tim, so 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 bring so so bringing it back to the world. I know Brad took us to uh, to Universal there, but the one thing I would suggest uh, if somebody wanted to splurge was is like Brad said, you know, he's about the experiences, and you know Emily was you guys were talking about the food. You know, I'm all about recreational activities, and the one thing I would suggest splurging on would be you know Jen and I have rented a pontoon before a pontoon boat before to go out on Seven Seas Lagoon and Bay Lake. That's an amazing day. You know, that's about. 50 bucks for the hour or something like that. You know, you, you go out there for a good hour or so, if you don't mind spending the money, uh, you know, the little water boats, you got fishing excursions, um, any kind of the water sports that are, that are on the lake, um, you know, take advantage. I mean, those are something that, you know, you normally wouldn't be able to do and being out on seven seas lagoon or being out on Bay Lake and watching the ferries go by while you're bass fishing in the morning, or you're out there on your own pontoon boat. I mean, I mean how many people can say they've actually rented a boat captain that their own boat, in front of Cinderella Castle, right? I mean, it's it's yeah. pretty cool. Awesome. I've done I've done it a few times. My wife gets a little nervous when I try docking the boat, even though I'm well qualified to do so. While she's giving me a dirty look while I say that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> slap him, Jen. Uh, slap him. You know, that's just something I think you know is something that you know you would not normally do, and that you would nor- you could splurge on at Walt Disney World be those extra recreational activities, you know, including golf and other things like that, horseback riding at Fort Wilderness, stuff like that. But yeah, definitely things like yes. that. Don't, don't shy yeah. away from the, the buggy ride. over at, Yeah. And the buggy ride or horse drawn thing over at, uh, is it wilderness lodge or, Fort or wilderness, no, yeah. Fort wilderness. Yeah. Fort wilderness. It, just yeah, especially at Christmas. It when you did it. Yeah. Yes. Christmas. It was really cool. Yeah. Hey, you we mentioned that. that. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, we did it on a January trip when my parents came, and I feel like everybody just had, like, this most magical, relaxing evening, and it was, the fun part is, it's, like, it's Disney magic, but it's also Disney fan magic, because it's all the people of Fort Wilderness that set up these beautiful displays at their campsites. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, Joe, you mentioned the pontoon boat. The I, I It's on my bucket list. One of these days, I want to rent that one. The, it's like the small yacht. I forget, oh, the grand, a, one. Uh, the grand, grand one. The grand one. Yes, yeah, yeah, Brad, I wanna, we're doing that together because that's on my list too. Oh, we I want to get there that. sooner if we splurge together. There you go. <laughs> DVC. Oh my gosh, a DVC meet. I was going to say like the next resort has been planned. I thought we were going to do Disneyland, but now it's back to Disney World, so we do the grand <laughs> one. And it's all on yeah. Tim. Well, Thank you, Tim. No, well, it's my pleasure. Well, I will. Say, I will say this. <laughs> Tim, right and Emily and Brad. Uh, you know, a good friend of the show, Florence Porter. Florence. She has done that with uh, her husband and a bunch of uh, uh, the other their friends they have from uh, Mike Rollins podcast. They actually did rent uh, the grand one and they kind of split it up and they uh, kind of divvied it up by different hours and stuff. And they, they said they loved it. So uh, it has been done before where people have split it. You know. So, wait, 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 wait. So they like they go and like one person has it for a couple hours and then the next I, person I, gets I it. I think they I think they kept a doctor or whatever or something like that. But like they yeah they each oh my gosh 
Yeah. So it's something Jeez. like that. Florence, if you're listening out there, I know, I know you are. Uh, maybe shed a little bit of light on that for us. But yeah, she said she enjoyed it, loved it. So I will say every single time we've been going recently, I'm because now we're we're DVC, so we want to make it interesting and fun and make each trip kind of different. So we are inclined to splurge a little bit, but differently on every trip now. So the last time we went, I did try desperately to find a fireworks cruise, but it was so last minute that we did not find one. Um, but I do plan to do one of those um, yeah. Seven Seas fireworks cruises someday yeah, with uh, my family. When we were, we, we had that together. plan for this last trip that got canceled. My daughter and I were going to do that. Oh. So, yeah, that looks like a good one. Awesome. It would be amazing. Well, we would be remiss... We actually put a, 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 a text out to Rebecca since she couldn't make it. Yes. And asked her what some of hers were. So I'm looking at her list here. A couple of things, a couple of them are the ones we've already covered. But she said, good tequila at La Cava. Now that comes as a shock. No Who knew? There. I, I, Anybody know about and this? Per, and Persis, which also comes as a shock if you've watched <laughs> our show very much and heard Mother Rebecca talking. So she does like her. Well, actually, now I think it's, she doesn't like the Dooney and Borks as much as she does that other high-end brand right emily oh you know i think we did talk about spartina heavily yes although you can't yes. like neglect dooney totally but also harvey's i mean you don't see it as much as you want to but i agree purses 100 percent. she is right Splurge. and and all of us all of us here except for tim i think uh uh would have at one time or another put on our list one of our favorite things is the races Oh yeah, and those are that was that was Rebecca's other two on there was races I think. Those are a life energy splurge because of the training and then getting up early in the morning, and then the expense associated and and honestly because we use so many of our DVC vacation our points we budget those for family vacations, uh, we end up paying cash for those rooms for races sometimes. So I would say those are just generally a splurge. In okay. fact, when I our vacation budget sort of like blew out of the water when I started doing Run Disney. So I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just, I mean, it was the highlight of my year. Oh, and the virtual races, guys. If you're not doing them now, if you need a little Disney magic and you're stuck here in a pandemic and you're feeling kind of low, um, sign up for some of these virtual races and make a goal for yourself. And I mean, Resort Loop Rocketeers all the way. Was that you that showed the medals from the last one? I was trying to remember who was it was showing the medals from the one you just... I know just... we showed some from the summer, but I don't know if we... Oh. I haven't finished the most recent one. I haven't finished Wine and Dine, guys, but... Uh. <laughs> I don't think the medals have come yet, though, because I convinced... Gotta get on that, Emily. Yeah, yeah. I promise, I promise. You gotta finish yeah, this so... before November, so... Okay, deal. Deal. Right. We also need to get flu shots in November. We were supposed to get them in October, but I still haven't made that happen, so hopefully... I, I mean, I'm not sure which is going to happen first, blue shots or me finishing that half. Not so are sure. you are you trying to c compare or connotate a race with getting a flu shot? Are they somehow? I mean, what I'm saying is, I am behind. I can't run everything. Oh, everything there you go. Life. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, okay. If I haven't gotten a flu I shot, concur. I certainly haven't done the half marathon yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to pick up enough of my kids' like worksheet paperwork things. Between the weeks, you know, I've yeah, been meaning to shower all week, and I just it just, right. keeps, it just keeps getting every time other keeps day. Slipping. It's fine. That's ambitious, really. <laughs> oh, does anybody have any last uh, splurges before we wrap this up? I do not, Tim. But thank you for asking. <laughs> um, speaking so of showering, kind. one last splurge. One okay. last splurge. Grand Floridian Basin White. Get some Ooh. of those bath bombs. So when you go home on your from your vacation, or some of the cool like. Jelly, uh, what are they called? Um, oh shoot, I can't remember the name, but basically those fancy little soaps. Buy some of those uh, on your way out. They're only like six bucks. The the tube of bath bombs could be like twelve to twenty. It's a tiny little splurge, but it will let you take it home with you, and then you can like sit there in your bathtub and pretend like you'll just remember. You'll remember your trip, and it's one of the best souvenirs for those of us who enjoy laying in a bathtub. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. How about you, Brad? Uh, I, th I think I've nailed a. We could, we could. There, everything is a splurge, like we said before, and they all are things we love. But I think I've nailed all the ones I mainly wanted to talk about. So I'm good. Awesome. Well, Brad, if anybody has any questions about your favorite splurges, where can they reach you? Well, I'm uh, Papa Mouse One on uh, Twitter. I'm Papa Mouse One Hundred One at Hotmail.com, and I'm usually hanging out at the Resort Live uh, Facebook page. 
and um, hanging out at my DVC Points podcast and their page as well. Awesome. Emily, where can people find you? You can find me planning my next splurge on an (laughs) add-on contract for DVC um, in my home in the village where Belle lives and or on Resort Loop Rock. Uh, Resort Loop Live or Rocketeers. <laughs> awesome. Joe, how about you? Uh, Twitter, Instagram at Joe Pike. You can also find me over at the Mickey Dudes podcast. Awesome. I'm Tim Scott. Facebook, Twitter, the website, resortloop.com. You can also find me on Looper Nation Live, our private Facebook group. You can find us all over there. It's also known as Resort Loop Live. It's the whole thing. And go over there and share your, your favorite Disney World splurges. We'll post that question with the show. Everybody, please go out there and share this whole show. The Gateway to the Magic. Resortloop.com. Take us out. See everybody. Vacation memories will stay with you and your family for a lifetime. The Resort Loop Travel Group was created with this in mind. Our fee-free services will relieve you of the stress and confusion of finding and booking the best vacation at the best price. After booking, we will continue to monitor for ways to save you even more on your vacation. We will check for any upcoming packages and discounts to save you as many vacation dollars as possible. Resort Loop Travel Group, gateway to your magical vacation memories. Get a quote or for more information, visit resortlooptravelgroup.com.